Okay, so I've got my cover, or the top of my box, with a red background. And um, I did provide an image of a pizza, so uh, this is something that you can work with if you want. There is a, uh, a lesson files folder, and... Let me delete that. This is what's inside of your lesson files folder. You've got a pizza.jpg, and then you have the start file for that robot tutorial that you're going to turn in along with the pizza box. So remember, uh, look at the instructions under the assignment, but you do need to submit your AI file for this robot along with a JPEG image, and then you're going to submit the AI file, that's the Adobe Illustrator file for the pizza box along with the JPEG image of the box. So I have this pizza JPEG that you can experiment with. You're, you're welcome to use it on your pizza box design if you'd like or you can find your own image. So in order to place that on our box what we would do is go to file, go to um, go to place, navigate to the folder where that pizza is residing and click on that hit place and then just click and what we would want to do is resize this so what I'm doing is I'm holding the shift key as I'm dragging from one of the corner nodes and then I would want to rotate this so our box is oriented so the bottom is to the left and the top is to the right so if I hover over the corner of this um, image, I can click and drag. And if I hold the shift key, it's going to lock that to 45 degree angles. So if I want it to be at 90 degrees from the original, then I want to make sure I hold the shift key. All right. So we would want to resize this, probably. Um, and then the problem is, is that we have this white box that appears behind the image. So anytime you have a JPEG image, um, something like this where it's a kind of like a silhouette or outline um, of an object, you've got this white background because because JPEGs aren't transparent. So there's a couple way that we a couple ways that we can deal with this. One is that we could just leave the white background as it is. And I really don't think, in, you know, for me, that's kind of not that exciting. You know, just a white rectangle behind a, a pizza. I would like to do something where I um, have the red background butting right up against, to the, uh, against the edge of the pizza. So there's a, few, a couple of ways that we can handle this. One thing we would not want to do is we would not want to go into the original image in Photoshop and change the background to red because we would have, um, it would never quite match up with our, with our background color. Even if we chose the exact color in Photoshop, we've got a raster image with a red fill within a... Uh, vector shape with a red fill and you would always see that difference even if they were the exact same color it would never it would never look correct it would never print correct uh, because they're they're um, rendered by the uh, software in two different ways so we need to somehow eliminate this white background so that we can let this red vector background show through one thing that we could do with an illustrator is we could go to the pen tool and we could um, click and drag and I'm going to do this really rough and really fast and we could just basically outline this pizza and again I'm being very rough um, quick with this I'm not being incredibly accurate because it's in a regular shape and one of the things that's happening is that since I'm creating a, a path, 
since I have um, I have a, a fill but no path, uh, a fill but no stroke on my pen, it filled this in as I was going. So if I if I uh, swap the fill and the stroke by clicking on this little curved arrow icon, then it reverses. So now I have no fill and a red stroke. All right. So what I've done is I've created a vector path um, that essentially outlines the pizza and I can use this as a mask. So if I hold the shift key and then click the white box, which is the image behind it, that will allow me to select both at the same time. So I'll do that again. I've got my path selected and then I hold the shift key and I click in the white background so I also have my pizza selected. And then if I right click and I choose make clipping mask, then I mask out that white background. And again, I've got some of that showing because I wasn't very accurate with it, but um, that's one way that we can handle that. So uh, let me release clipping mask. Okay. And I'm going to delete that path. Let's see if I can select it. All right, we don't need that path. What I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to go into Photoshop and I was already in there experimenting, but I'll get out of that. So I'm in Photoshop and I'm going to open that JPEG image within Photoshop and I'm going to unlock this background layer and then I'm going to go to the uh, magic wand tool, select the white background, and hit delete, and command D to deselect, and now I have a transparent background. So what I can do is I can preserve that transparency by exporting this as a JPEG, I mean as a, as a PNG. We'll do PNG 24 with transparency checked, and just choose save, and then I'm saving that in the same folder. All right, and if we go back to Illustrator, if I am going to delete this JPEG image and then go back to File, Place, double-click the PNG, click to Place, and now we have a transparent background. Rotate that again. Okay, so I can resize this. Again, hold the shift key. You don't want to distort this image. Again, um, this is a sample image that you can use, but uh, feel free to use your own artwork. It doesn't even have to be a pizza. It just depends on your concept. You do want to come up with a fictional name for a pizza place. Don't, don't use something like Domino's or Pizza Hut or or Marcos or anything like that. All right, so um, make sure that you don't distort your images. So again, if, if, I, if I just click and drag from the side like this, I'm gonna have a really squashed pizza. So we don't want that. If that does happen, you wanna Command Z to undo. But again, hold the Shift key and drag from the corner when you're resizing. And that will preserve the proportions so that it doesn't get distorted. Um, now, maybe it's not a great idea to have this smack dab in the middle. Um, maybe we want something like where it's, you know, we're showing part of the pizza or something like that. All right, so in this case, we would still have a, uh, we would still be able to use that clipping mask feature. To, to mask out the part of the pizza that's extending beyond, beyond our die lines. Again, we, this is a concept. Imagine we're presenting it to a client and we don't want to have anything going beyond our edges here. So um, let's go ahead and mask this out. I'm going to choose the rectangle tool. I'm going to click, uh, click and drag right from the edge here to encompass the pizza completely, the part that's inside of our box. 
And then with that still selected, I'm going to hold shift and then I'm going to select the pizza image behind it. And I'm going to right click and choose make clipping mask. And that will mask out this part of the image. It doesn't delete it, it's still there. So one of the things with this is that if you want to move this, let's say I wanted to move it over here, well then I've got, you know, a problem. So we can release the clipping mask if we need to make some modifications. So again, if I click to select this pizza image and I right click and choose release clipping mask, then my pizza is whole again. But I'm going to make need to make a new clipping mask if I if I move this and I want to uh, uh, mask it out again. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Again, hold the shift key to select the pizza image and the um, rectangle that we're using as a mask. They need to both be selected and the mask needs to be on top or above the uh, object that it's masking out. Right click, choose make clipping mask, and there it is.